If you like the show, support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash night attack. You'll get early access to the pre-show and the post-show in one big feed. Patreon.com slash night attack. Oh, hells yeah! Broadcasting live from the newly minted Diamond Club Studios, deep in the heart of the Seven Acre Schwood, located smack dab right there on Austin City Limits. It is night attack. Live in studio, I'm Brian Brushwood, joined as always by my BFF in OAK. It's J-R-Y, Justin Robert. Young. What's up, Justin? What's up, Justin? What's up, Justin? Was that the song that your mom used to sing to send, to send you to sleep? <laughs> it was. It was. She would often sing in her, in her dulcet, melodic tones. What's up, Justin? What's up, Justin? What's up, Justin? And then she would wait until you almost drifted, drifted off to, to hit the bridge. And you'd go, hey, yo, Justin. Yes. And then just like a drum solo all around my crib. Just like. <laughs> and then finally a chorus of all her friends would hey jude style come in and start belting out like now go to sleep justin sleep justin go to sleep go to sleep go to, go to, go to sleep <laughs> oh Oh God hey, damn! Man, what's going on? Hey man, we got some we got some hot uh, hot viral caking in the making. <laughs> caking sounds we bad. Of, we have a lot of caking uh, to cut through here. Uh, number one, let me, let's welcome our producer Bryce. Bryce, how you doing? I'm good. Uh, we watched one not we watched what not thirty seconds of this video that we're about to break down. Yeah, it, we should we should contextualize it right now as we record this. There's a bit of a viral moment happening from a 2008 Hillary Clinton campaign thing. But Hillary Clinton already in the news because she's you know talking about like oh I don't know I feel kind of called to run against Trump. You know, when you know, let me but listen to been, the whispers. She's been saying that. Uh, yeah, I think the the big thing is she's got a new documentary series coming out on Hulu. Uh, because uh, what we all think about every day is I wish I had more access to Hillary Clinton. <laughs> so finally, that unmet demand is finally going to be quenched with yet another biopic for, for Hillary. And uh, from that, there was this video. Who was the the, the person that broke it here, Bryce? The, uh, the, Jer the Jeremy Kaplowitz. Jeremy Kaplowitz, comedian. Yeah. And, and keep keep in mind, it was. Uh, I mean, I, it's hard for me to remember two thousand eight being a long time ago. Uh, like like, I, it's so wild. That's twelve years ago. That's a lifetime on internet stuff. Um, it certainly is. But immediately, actually, a friend of mine sent this. Uh, of of our, our our friend Gabe, who actually is a, a a part of our community here, he sent me that last night, and I was like, that's not even like the 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 closest to the most cringe Hillary Clinton pop culture parody yeah there is nothing worse than what was sent to me by our friend andrew heaton a few months ago and we can share now because i thought this was just the domain of political nerds but if we're going back if, if now the the hip kids on the twitter are are really really into looking at old cringy hillary clinton parodies then boy howdy do we have one to share because, folks, the year was 1995, and at the Gridiron Dinner in Washington, D.C., the Clintons decided to make a movie parody of then-absolute smash hit Forrest Gump. I guess it had already won Best Picture, but uh, uh, let's just go ahead and roll it here. So, uh, Bryce, you could talk us through what you're seeing here, sure, since so you're seeing it for the first time. A green screen feather is floating above uh, some helicopter footage of the <laughs> Washington Monument. Of the, yeah, of the National Mall. Uh, fade. Now the feather is landing. Oh, uh, across the street from the White House. The very big white, <laughs> the big house. So, okay, hold on. We have to stop here. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a shot of some feet, some kind of fresh white ni Nikes that are clearly green screened onto grass onto grass <laughs> <laughs> green screened onto green grass onto green grass uh, and they've reached down to pick up this feather all right which is monstrous yeah. it's an ostrich feather <laughs> for some reason it's a huge <laughs> 
it, now this is the moment when the, ca to. <laughs> the camera cuts up to Hillary Clinton in what, not quite pigtails, but her hair pulled back, a red bow on Big top of her head. Yeah. This is back in her bangs era uh, with with a uh, essentially a not quite a Forrest Gump costume, but it's, it's but a like, cream, uh, like a cream suit and like a checkerboard and, uh, and like, and like shirt. the plastic uh, tablecloth from a barbecue joint. <laughs> I mean, it was, yeah. Cause it would be Southern rube. Yeah. Right. Like you were imagine Hillary Clinton be like, I don't know. Give me a Southern rube outfit. That, mm -hmm. that would kind of be where she's going for here. Now, Bryce, let me ask you a question. Yes. If you were to describe to somebody who never saw it, what makes Forrest Gump a distinct character? <laughs> yeah. How Pret would you describe that to a stranger who has never seen the movie Forrest Gump? So, uh, you so, uh, uh, ain't uh, never heard of Forrest Gump. Uh, what's that movie about? So I I know I know about Forrest Gump. I actually haven't seen Forrest Gump, uh, but I know enough about and it. That okay, well then how would you understand? How would you describe the character uh, of Forrest Gump? Forrest Gump seems like he might have some form of of possibly autism. Oh, oh. is uh, he's no? Is he, it's my understanding is he has a very no, 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 particular. Going. Going. He has a very going. particular cadence that is that is uh, -huh. uh, uh you know seems to be you know uh, kind of straightforward and maybe a little tactless and and uh, almost innocent in that way um and i know he at some point he runs a lot <laughs> all right but i don't know what that's not bad okay and let's just say very specific way of speaking in 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 the mid 90s uh we were not as aware of all the different ways we could describe mental disabilities. In uh, fact, mostly it would fall into one R-shaped bin. Uh, and to yeah. be clear, it is a significant plot point at multiple times during the movie that he is uh, not very smart. Uh, and and okay. uh, it, like, so like, he maybe just is a simp. He's just kind of a a a a a, a dummy. Just kind of a. a yeah, I mean, like, it's somewhere between pure and simple, I think, would probably be the most charitable way to describe that character. That gotcha. he, he, is, he is innocent to both his benefit and then as he makes his way colorfully through the world, his faults. But now take that. And again, uh, it, it's an enduring character that Tom Hanks played to, uh, to tremendous financial acclaim. And an artistic acclaim, it is iconic, but it is also a challenging role. How would you imagine that a non-actor <laughs> like Hillary Clinton would take the role of somebody with <laughs> mental disabilities for a parody video that she's making right now for the gridiron? Like on, on a scale of, yeah. of of zero to partial to full. <laughs> <laughs> How would you say an, an unnuanced actor would portray this? I have too much nuance as an actor to answer that question. <laughs> it would be bad. It it would be well, it would be bad to to portray it to do a portrayal of the portrayal. Of I mean, it. to quote Tropic Thunder, you never go <laughs> full you never art. Go. You never go. Although the good news is, Bryce, you don't have to guess because you could just hit play on this clip. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Hi, my name's Hillary, Hillary Gump. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. How you feeling? So those classic <laughs> Harvard acting chops of Hillary Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> now this is not Bill next to her. Not no, yet. No, 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 not yet. Okay. Uh. <laughs> 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 oh. You can call me Hillary Rodham Gump. That's what everybody calls me, except on the Connie Chung show. <laughs> <laughs> what does Connie Chung call her? So this is like a lot of this, uh, 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 it, in, in the defense of the video, this was created for, and at, at that point, not understanding where ubiquitous internet video would go it was meant to make one room of people at a very specific time laugh and so these a lot of the jokes in this are very specific to the mid 90s and there was some 
of the, you know, basically the idea that Hillary was like this radical feminist for for keeping her From like middle name, you know, middle name uh. as her a name or whatever uh, but but there's definitely for the audio listeners there's definitely like on the punch lines um her her staring right into the barrel of the camera to deliver it <laughs> <laughs> you know that's my house back there my mama always told me the white house is like a box of chocolates it's pretty on the outside but inside there's lots of nuts <laughs> <laughs> okay, just audio listeners, just assume every time you hear a punchline, she it turns way into her directly face. into yeah. the camera. It's down the barrel, just in case you're not aware that a punchline. I mean, like like the like a Debbie Downer sketch. <laughs> yeah, she, yeah. That is what it looks wah, like. Wah. <laughs> also, I just want to point out the plot hole that the feather fell on the opposite side of the street of the White House, and they are sitting. <laughs> On the side of the street with the White House, they're back to it. So I just want to say also. Also, she couldn't even read the script right because the original line was full of lots of nut. Yeah. Because, because. As, oh. as it turns out, a troubling, ominous portrait. <laughs> <laughs> Mama always gave me good advice. She told me life is like a regional health care alliance. If you pool your risks with a community health purchasing cooperative and mix in a prospective payment review, you can reach an ideal cost containment ratio while leaving the single payer system available. Bob's now that's good advice. Uh -oh. <laughs> Very clearly reading all of this <laughs> over the shoulder, <laughs> like 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 comedically, it would have been better to yeah. deliver that in that same down the barrel Debbie Downer style, yeah. but there's no way she can remember that line. Oh my god. While leaving the single payer system oh my God, in 1970, for good advice too. Been doing it for years. Like back in 1972, I was what you call a counterculture McGovernick. I even went to the convention. I told Senator McGovern, wait till 2 a.m. to give your acceptance. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, can I just get an animated looped gif of, of green screen Hillary Clinton at the Wait, McGovern the rally? <laughs> They've got her with the hippie haircut and the bandana, and she's doing she's doing a little she's like doing her signature dance, the the full the full the church clap. <laughs> <laughs> Never go full Rodham. <laughs> but also, they have they've composited her very short and very close. <laughs> yeah, but very large. She's like but big <laughs> compared to everybody else. Like her her shoulders are like two times the size of everybody else that's up there on the screen. Well, the funny part is they could have made it clear that she was closer to the camera, except for they cut her out behind the podium, of the podium. which means the only way yeah. that this can be is if she's three times the size of everybody else. And also oh. like right behind this podium. Oh my God. In speech. That way, it will be on in prime time in Hawaii. I accept your nomination. Funny thing, he carried one state, but wouldn't you know it, it wasn't Hawaii. Wait, oh, pop pause. For some reason, she suddenly is still <laughs> a oh, hippie. Yeah. <laughs> they changed her back to the hippie haircut. Now they're both about to get destroyed <laughs> by a bus. <laughs> See, she became a hippie in front of the White House somehow <laughs> with her glasses on. All right. <laughs> oh. In one state, but wouldn't you know it, it wasn't Hawaii. The bus drives by, and now she's got a, a like a bee comb haircut. Bee, is uh, is yeah, that supposed to hot. look like um, yeah. uh, uh, Bob Dole's wife, or or like a classic? Uh, uh, no, I think that's that's just a little uh, a little little poke at Bob Dole. So this was during the nineteen the, the, the Bill Clinton reelection campaign, but I think that the haircut is to the next story she's about to tell. Mama always told me, Hillary, Hillary Gump, life is like a hairstyle. You just keep changing it till you find something that works. Anyway. Is that even a know? joke? Was was this at the time someone, was Bob I Dole's wife changing her hair a lot? 
No, I think this is about her changing her hair uh, uh, because there was, you know, I don't know. There was a weird thing in the 90s where where media was very weird about women changing their haircuts. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. oh my God. I, I could live with a gift of this, too. <laughs> this one's a little tougher to explain. <laughs> but Hillary slowly go back and forth. <laughs> Back into the lamp. <laughs> okay, let's stop doing that. <laughs> Back into oh. the lamp. Anyway, in 1974, <laughs> I went to Washington to help investigate that Nixon fella. That's when I became deep throat. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Christ! <laughs> How could you not know? <laughs> That sounds like the end of a ghost story. <laughs> well, it looks like it's about to become one. <laughs> <laughs> so now we've got footage from all the president's men. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just now realizing the, the, the visual effects they're going to have to do. <laughs> in this scene. Yeah, yeah. Guess what? Hold on to your butt. Story is stalled on us. Yeah, by the way, not a joke. She just repeats the, the thing that he throat said in the movie and famously in the book. I like that. I like how nobody wrote this sketch, apparently. I wonder what. Oh, and now she's got, now she's got like a little, like, yeah, like a Leslie America, Nope. Kind a of Marilyn thing. Monroe looking oh, yeah. hairdo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder what happened to that nice Woodward fella. You wrote the agenda. Oh, anyway. <laughs> Agenda. That's actually that's actually not a bad uh, joke. Uh, yeah, eventually Bob Woodward started. He kept writing books about presidents, and presidents tended to do not like it because he wound up getting a lot of information. And so at that point, the Clintons were pissed off at Bob Woodward for writing a book that was critical of them. Gotcha. In the late seventies, I met President Carter. He was a nice man, but he worried a lot. So I gave him some advice too. I said, Jimmy. Give a speech about mayonnaise. Everybody <laughs> loves mayonnaise, but evidently he misunderstood my accent and he gave a speech about malaise. Uh, woof. <laughs> I mean, talking about that's like walking a mile to find a fucking empty cigar box, right? <laughs> like, that is one of those jokes that fucking is a bad idea to begin with and it's worse when you get there. <laughs> malaise. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it would be a much better bit if it. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I was gonna say it would be a much better bit if it cut to like a dub of him saying like, "Anyway, I love mayonnaise." <laughs> like, <laughs> understood my accent, and he gave a speech about malaise. At Andrews Air Force Base outside Washington, they said goodbye to him. <laughs> They clearly were under deadline at this point when it comes to the composting. So, yeah, so there's like a cut to a chain link fence with, uh, I guess, the supporters out. And they've, they, it's not like they, they, they clearly took some sort of video of her face, but she, her face is not doing anything. And it's composited around with like a hand, a still image yeah. of hands holding up a street sign that say thanks yes, mr I president guess, i guess likely far more iconic in the moment but but jimmy carter <laughs> leaving uh, uh after he loses to ronald reagan and somebody holding up a thanks mr president sign although that also looks totally composited in so uh, yeah. yeah uh also I, I i think i actually said composted uh in which case i i stand by it <laughs> <laughs> Then there was this Greek fella, Michael Dukakis. He was running for president in Greek 1988, fella. but he was kind of small. So I told him how he could look more fearsome. Yeah, of course, the, the famous blunder of 
looking like a military guy. At that point, I began to think no Democrat was ever going to win again, that any nutcase Republican could beat any Democrat. Oh, and then the, the guy's Hi. gone. Hi. Would you like a chocolate? Oh, and now yeah. Bill. <laughs> Well, Wait, back, that, back that up, back that up. Listen to the, listen to the sexual level greed. <laughs> ah. I mean, by the way, just let's take a moment to appreciate the fucking chungus that was Bill Clinton in <laughs> 1995. Like that is the absolute unit that was <laughs> Bill Clinton pre-heart attack. Would you like a chocolate? Oh yeah, I would. Thanks. Oh, <laughs> now why is he doing it? He's that? doing it too. Why did you oh, do that, Bill Clinton? Oh, yeah. Like Tiger Woods, Bill Clinton. Hi. Would you like a chocolate? Oh, yeah, I would. Thanks. Mm. There you go. Well, you know, my mama always said reporters are like a box of chocolates. Too many of them can kill you, but the sweet ones are awful nice. Hey, you, you got any french fries to go with these chocolates? Yeah. Here you go. Oh, thanks. Product placement. Cupid is as Cupid does. <laughs> what is going on? Oh, and the feather's on its way out. <laughs> Bucky. God. <laughs> Eve, I, Eve, I get that this oh. is probably for some, like, big dinner. Like, like a... Yeah, so secret. yeah, so so just just so you know, the the gridiron dinner is there. Uh, uh, it's one of the many DC traditions where the elected officials get to mingle with the reporters and the and like basically like it's supposed to be a moment where you can spar during the year, but there's these moments where you get together. So that's that that that's where all the reporter stuff is. But it is oh. intensely cringe. <laughs> so we've got a looping loop <laughs> yes! now of uh, hippie Hillary hip hippery. Rodham Clinton. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so there we go. The 1995 Gridiron Dinner uh, video with Hillary Clinton. Oh. Uh, for your for your enjoyment, Night Attack Faithful. Hey, man, uh, if you want to say thank you to us for bringing you this hot breaking news from 24, 25 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Well, then you I can say somebody, somebody, somebody went on the internet and was like, "Oh, you're getting clicks on a video from from 16 years ago." Well, listen to this. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Uh, it, you can support the show by heading on over to patreon.com slash night attack and give us a little bit of jingle. And, of course, if you are a new patron or if you up your pledge, we're going to say thank you by doing a little thing that we like to call. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the night attack. New Patreon name chant corner hour. It's an hour of... <laughs> All right, uh, uh, you know what? This person uh, just made a, a, a five-fold increase of their pledge, so I'm gonna oh assume God. that this is the single person who is responsible for that whole video that we watched. I would like to believe that the video was conceived by this person, that it was directed, that it was shot, that it was composted, <laughs> that it was... <laughs> uh, and I, for one, wanna say thank you for your service. Chris, Chris K. K. Chris K. Ladies and gentlemen, hailing from Washington, D.C., by way of the Super Bowl in what I just learned is Miami, Florida, it's Chris K. 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 <laughs> I like the echo on the echo effect. Thank you very much, Chris K. Uh, of course, uh, Brian, uh, what we like to do here is reward everybody that watches us live. We have always been a live broadcast, always will be a live broadcast, and that's why we ask you to watch us on Twitch.tv beginning at 10 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Pacific. We even go live a little early, but uh, for the next minute, we will shout out anybody who donates or subscribes here to the show uh, by telling a little story. So, Brian, you know your man, Jeff? Oh, uh, yeah, he's the kind of guy that would cheer 501 bits. Yeah, he's a good stand-up dude. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I was walking down the street with him, and uh, next thing you know, who do you guess we run into? 
I mean, I, I hope it's a, a new subscriber. I, I don't know, maybe Dan Wally or, or Sooth or or any of the other people that I'm trying to think of right now as I wait to see an emote pop up right now. Maybe a gambling man. <laughs> You know, uh, I, I, I agree, Brian. Uh, gambling, <laughs> I just realized I, I you, might... you can't take all of them and then leave me with nothing. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. Wanyam does that. You know that? <laughs> Wanyam's doing that. It's just always, it's always uh, a real scandal you are, Brian. <laughs> like, I'm constantly trying to set you up for a thing, like uh, as if you bought a new shampoo called Zeus and Hera for a mane that's like lightning and also a jealous wife. There we go. Thank Neil you very Fleisch. much. No. <laughs> Thank you, Neil Fleisch. <laughs> uh, of course, uh, folks, uh, head on over there uh, and uh, become uh, somebody who gives us uh, gives to us during the show uh, we will also shout out our bit boss as soon as uh, we are able to uh, we're able oh, to do that still but... doing that dumb thing the dumb thing the dumb thing shame but first let's go ahead and welcome our guest here for today returning to the show he's got a new movie to talk about david palomero welcome sir Huzzah! hey <laughs> david Thank it's you guys been... for having me back uh, dude it's it's been a minute how long how long ago were were you on i think it was uh, what were we back on nsfw back at the time no. Uh, no, well, 2011 when I, uh, Mike and I, we had we did a performance, I think, over at the, yeah. it was like, was it the Twit uh, Studio? Yeah. In oh, California? Wow. Oh, wait 20, a minute. Yeah. 2011. No, no, that, that was. Yeah. Sure, and yeah. then Brian, in uh, 2014, my documentary was released, and we had a show, we had a screening at the Alamo Draft House there. Yep. And then you were nice enough to have Mike and I at your place, actually, where you were doing your part of the show, and we came on and did, uh, we talked about the movie, and we did a little acoustic set with Mike and I. So, um, yeah. Yeah, wow. that was back in my. That's back in Mike's apartment, actually, when he used to do uh, he used to do uh, uh, UStream shows from his apartment. His wow, UStream! Movie. That's a uh, that's uh, that's another. Yeah, yeah. I've not thought <laughs> that's a name I've not heard since oh before you were born. Uh, yeah, what, what, uh, Mike's first foray into the uh, internet, kind of doing that stuff first when he yeah. Uh, but uh, but yeah, tell us a bit about the uh, about the new project. Uh, well, it's uh, very different than my rock, rock and roll documentary. It's basically a one location Agatha Christie style murder mystery. I mean, it's kind of like uh, the indie knives out kind of thing. Um, uh, we shot the movie in 2016, but I've always been a big fan of that kind of stuff like Agatha Christie and Sherlock Holmes. Uh, stuff like Death Trap, which was a play before this movie and um, Hitchcock's Rope, if anyone's seen that movie. Um, and yeah, I, you know, I was trying to do a film, a, a larger budget film. We couldn't get it off the ground. So I thought maybe we can write a one location, uh, murder mystery. And my friend, Tim Davis and I wrote the script and it was uh, tons of fun. It was really hard. <laughs> the documentary I made was basically myself and, uh, interviewing a bunch of people. And then I had a bunch of help at the end with the editing, but obviously this one was a, a narrative film. So it was a lot of, uh, uh, front heavy, uh, with the crew and stuff like that. And, and even though it was just. One location, it was, re it, was, it was really hard, uh, but I, I had a really great crew and cast, and um, yeah, we went to festivals and stuff like that, and it came out this year on Blu-ray and digital and all that good stuff, so um, yeah, we, we, we did more with the movie than I, th I thought we ever would, and it was fun to sort of dip my toe into the the narrative world after doing a documentary. So, so, so that, that is a massive departure for you in terms of uh, what you had already put out. It looked fantastic from the clips that we're seeing right now. If somebody wants to go get it immediately to support you and check out what you did, where can they go immediately right now online? Uh, well, they should go to our, I have a landing page on our Facebook, uh, the movie's Facebook page. So it'd be uh, bit.ly slash murder made easy. Murder made easy is all lowercase. And on there, you can see we were on Amazon and uh, iTunes, Google Play, Microsoft Store, Tubi TV, which you can watch the movie on Tubi TV for free, but it has ads like, you know, intercut uh, sure. throughout it. But if you don't want to, you know, rent it that way or whatever. And we have a Blu-ray available with special features from a company called Scream Team releasing and the DVD you can get on Amazon.com. So, uh, yeah, we're pretty much out everywhere you can find also the uh, i think the dvd not the blu-ray but the dvd on um like bestbuy.com and walmart and all that kind of stuff so cool so so um, who turns out to be the killer in the end sorry <laughs> well, at the end of, yeah yeah at the end of the film it turns out it was mike <laughs> TV, who did okay the good <laughs> of a bitch. 
you know, it is like a traditional mystery. So there is some twists and turns. So uh, we, you know, I don't, I don't sit there coming up with twists for stories, but this one kind of hit me on my way home from work one day and I wrote it all down and then we, we made a script out of that outline. So, uh, you know, we've surprised a bunch of people. A lot of people never don't guess the ending. So it seems to work for, for some folks, you know, Oh, that's great. Other people, yeah. 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 But uh, but yeah, thanks for always supporting, you know, the, the films I've done, and obviously also supporting my my ex band Get Set Go. You know, I mean, that was I saw Mike the other day. He was talking about our uh, Fury of Your Lonely Heart, and I remember he, I remember when I, I I'd forgotten, but I remember when he went on the show and the boost that gave us for the um, Kickstarter. And so, thank you for always supporting oh, yeah. all this crazy stuff we do. Well, and, oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah, we, we 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 would we would love to. Uh, well, in the meantime, do we have a let's have a little bit of fun and game shenanigans? Uh, let's do a little who done it by and by who done it. I mean, who done did win this game? Uh, uh, yeah, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, I did it. I did it. Games I did are, it. Games are like a box of did it. Did it. <laughs> uh, hmm. Oh, by the way, by the way, Brian, there's there's like uh, only 10 percent composting in my film. Just so you know. OK, good. Yeah, he <laughs> yeah, yeah. tries to put it to a minimum so it can enhance the realism. Good and action. obviously my TV is not in the film because otherwise it wouldn't be a murder mystery. It would be a vampire. Movie. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody uh, knows Mike's a vampire. No, I, I love right. Mike. Mike's amazing. I love him. No, no, no. Yeah, but also he doesn't age and he feasts exactly. from the blood of the young. <laughs> right. So we exactly. uh, we talked, well, I think it was la on last week's episode about uh, the Burger King getting in trouble for their D-word ad. Was this in the pre-show possibly? Oh, I, yeah, I'm not they, sure. Was it, was it, they had a, an ad about the Impossible Burger and yeah, in yeah. it someone so, says, so damn. It, yeah, yeah. The the the, the oh. group uh, a million moms uh, was protesting them because somebody says "damn" during the Impossible Whopper ad. Right. Um, so, and uh, <laughs> well, maybe maybe he really didn't like it, and he just meant like this burger is immoral and should be burning in a lake of fire for all eternity. Damn. <laughs> damn it. So uh, who who is a million mom organization? What do they represent again? It's two ladies. Okay. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Uh, yeah, it, it's a it's a Facebook group that has uh, recently made a lot of waves, but mostly because they don't like commercials. You know, if you wonder what a million moms really get fired up about, it's uh, uh, gay wedding planning commercials on the Hallmark Channel and the Impossible Whopper. See, we should because, form we should form a yeah. million dads Facebook group that's dedicated to buying TiVos to all these million moms so they don't have to watch all the commercials and complain <laughs> about it. <laughs> 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 hula hoop plus for all of you ladies just skip the commercials <laughs> so i i think we it, it was if it wasn't in the show then it was in the pre-show that we talked about this but uh citrus listened to the show uh and uh put together a list of of so it like for example we have this headline here uh, reporting on that million moms uh story one million mom slams burger king for use of d word right so right but it's so, not uh, it's not a, a d it's not dick right it's, yeah that's not the d word that i would have thought of yeah how, yeah, how many d words would you go with before damn uh, I, uh let's see uh dick douche uh dingle i i would definitely go with dickhead yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. D uh douchebag maybe douchebag, douchebag yeah, yeah that's a good variation yeah, yeah. D uh, D Dingleberry, <laughs> Dookie, <laughs> Dildo. <laughs> now we're getting going. <laughs> Dick Wolf. <laughs> of course, yeah. I mean, a uh, uh, defenestration. Shout out to Prague. <laughs> the D Man, <laughs> the world record holder. Yeah. Dork. Yeah, that's a fine variation. Oh, Although sure. I think Dork is actually a scientific term for our whale's dick. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Take a take, take, yeah, take a look. Go I'll Google that one later. So, <laughs> 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 no, let me just open an incognito browser here. <laughs> uh, but but yeah. So uh, uh, that that seems to be an imprecise use of of the D word. Although uh, it D -word. certainly, yeah, intensely cowardly. Considering I assume that they are only using that because they also don't want to get yelled at by. The by the moms, right? So uh, Citrus put together a list. <laughs> a bunch of, that's so they go with the headline: a bunch of c words get upset <laughs> over the d word. <laughs> <laughs> the c stands for cranky pants. By the way, please yes, do not email yeah. us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Citrus puts together a list of headlines that are very similar. That say. Uh, 
uh, that that have a letter word, right, a, a blank word in them, um, but is not the word you would expect or is, is, is not actually a curse word or a slur. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to give you a headline, and in some cases I'll give you a little extra, uh, and you have to tell me what the blank word is in this game that we call the word word. Um, you mean the, that I wait, something. shouldn't that be the W word? Uh, oh, that's even better. <laughs> uh, so uh, so we, I'll give you guys a headline. We'll go in order, and you'll each give me what you think the word uh, is repl- is actually meant to be. Um, and uh, we'll, you know, science uh, will determine who's correct if no one gets it right. So Ready. You guys ready to play? You got this? Yeah. yeah. Uh, this one is from Decider.com. Stream it or skip it. The Deadlands on Shudder, an exciting and funny ancient Maori riff on the Z-word genre. On the Z-word genre. Brian, we'll start with you. Uh, the Deadlands on Shudder, an exciting and funny ancient Maori riff on the Z-word genre. I guess I guess zombie genre, because this is... Yeah. Uh, w- w- what's what's the service again? Uh, Shudder or something? Shudder. Yeah, Shutter. yeah, yeah. So that's that's a horror yeah. service. So yeah. And the, the Z-word... Yeah, I'll say, uh, uh, yeah, that works. <laughs> Zoophilia is the only other one I, could, <laughs> I like. Justin? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with zombie. I don't know if zebra or, <laughs> or, or anything else might go. Uh, xylophone. Go, go I know, I know. Uh, <laughs> please don't email us. Is it xylophone? Uh, uh, all right, and God, uh, Dave. That's what I would have said to zombie. I don't know. I don't know anything. The, the, there is there. I, I do have an outside. There, my first idea that I discarded once I realized it's almost certainly a horror movie was that maybe it was culturally insensitive to refer to. Like I didn't know if Zulus had a genre per se, or maybe there is some right. kind of uh, inappropriateness to that. But but I think I do think it's zombie. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Everyone's saying zombie. I'm trying to find. Here it is. Uh, then of course the correct answer was. Zombie, the yeah. zombie film. So, kind of a little bit of an uh, an easy one for you. Now, why would uh, I guess I guess among horror enthusiasts, maybe maybe zombie movies are so played out that it's just like don't even say it. You know the old Z maybe. word. I wonder if there's like oh, you know what? SEO. Actually, we were talking about this in a recent episode. Have you noticed that all the zombie movies they all refuse to say the word zombie? They call them the Walking Dead or or the Infected or the Sick. Or, yeah. Or the um, did 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 Twenty Eight Days Later start that? Did, was that was that one yeah. of the ones that they didn't that, call them zombies? That is correct. That is one where they didn't call them zombies. Your man Jeff says it's copyrights, but I don't know that zombie uh, is a copyrighted term. I don't think you could. Hmm. Yeah, they don't say the word zombie in uh, uh, Night of the Walking Dead or Night of the Living Dead either. Um, oh man, there's two or three other words as well. But then you have like zombie land because the title itself has. Well, yeah, I, I think I think part of it is just like you want to do something fresh because otherwise yeah. it's literally just the same slow moving threat. And that's why everybody always tries to gussy it up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like I think Game of Thrones, like the White Walkers, you know, which I mean, they basically were kind of like ice zombies, basically. Well, but yeah, but then there was also the other ones that had the other powers and. Yeah. Right, right, right. Really wish yeah. that would have been an interesting payoff. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. <laughs> also, what was up with There's that comet? Like oh. <laughs> they, they had that red comet for one scene for no apparent reason. Comet? In yeah. Game of Thrones, you don't remember that? No. Yeah, they made a big deal. Like, there's a red comet in the sky. That will never be referenced again for no reason. Because there's an element of like, oh, okay, well, that's why magic is kind of coming back and all these people. Right. That the dragons are coming being, back. Right. Yeah, why people used to fake being magicians or have magic powers now do have magic powers and dragons are here. But I guess it was like, oh, I don't know, man. Remember that red comet? <laughs> why? Like, that was yeah. pretty much the end of it. <laughs> All right, we got a uh, we got a uh, round two here. We'll call it round two. Uh, oh, wait, hold on, Bryce. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Uh, are you putting in the the Z word, or are those in the actual headlines that were run? Uh, so they they are no. So like for example, in that uh, in that article, uh, the dead Zomb- the- zombie is in that headline. No, it the headline says Z word. So I am uh, word genre. Okay, That's okay, weird. Please. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so these, are all, these are all actually in there. Uh, right. these, this is not you editing the headlines. Right. I'm not editing the headlines, um, gotcha. but uh, we're, we're right. pulling from the article what the actual word is. Cool. Uh, like this one right. from thriveglobal.com. 
It's time to talk about the M word. <laughs> time to talk about the M word. What, what site is this? This is thriveglobal.com. Uh, in fact, I can I can tell you uh, this. Uh, many have many women have to deal with the side effects of blank in the workplace, most often in silence, where the blank is the actual word that we're. Who's turn? Whose turn is it? We're gonna start oh, with I Justin would. on this one, but Dave I sounds think, like he knows it. I, I, I think it's the change of life, Bryce. I think it is menopause. Ooh, it's menopause, damn. Dave. Ah, uh, that was my that was my guess. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go with menopause as well. Okay. I'm going to go with man craziness. When you're just man crazy, <laughs> you just got to get the men. Ah, I've got the man crazies. It's time to talk about it, people. This is before the Diet Coke <laughs> break. Silence for too long. I'm just too man crazy. Oh, you men, you'll never understand what it is to be so crazy about you. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking just some bunch of ladies fucking going crazy like a 90s beer commercial, just punching through walls and backflipping through uh, open windows and shit. Just, uh, dudes in, in G strings, like looking like a mail route ad. <laughs> All right. The answer we were looking for was. Was menopause. Yeah. All right. Hooray, so, menopause. Uh, the why are some of these words they don't want to put them in their headlines? I don't understand why any of these things would be offensive to. That's people. that's 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 sort yeah. of the 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 confusion. It's like it, it, we're trying to like find stuff that for whatever reason they're sensitive about. I I have to imagine it, it's maybe more attractive, especially if you can use a word that would replace the the the, the actual. Oh, like if you see that in your Google word. News feed. It, and it said, it's time to talk about menopause. You would not click on that. No, <laughs> but I don't have if it menopause. said it's time to talk about the M word, That's right. then you're like, well, I got to know if it's man crazy. <laughs> so it's not. <laughs> well, then forget it. <laughs> oh, it man. could be meatballs. It could be politicians with meat, meatball politicians. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> testing, testing your per political prowess. All right. Uh, starting in this round, you guys are not going to be able to steal other answers. You're going to have to give me a different answer, everybody. Sorry. So. I... No, no, it's fine. Here we go. Uh, in fact, David, we'll start with you on this one. Oh, great. <laughs> this is from the Toronto Sun. Playing politics mm. with the R word as Canada's economy sputters. Playing politics with the R word as Canada's economy sputters. Mm. What's the R word? Oh, as Hillary Clinton in 95. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, we're gonna start. Yeah, with right. Rodham. <laughs> the R word, Rodham. That's funny. Um, oh God, I can't think of one. Resources. That's terrible. <laughs> I can't think of what it would be. I'm gonna go with resources. That's horrible. resources. That's a horrible game. Okay. Uh, uh, Brian, playing politics with the R word. You know what? Canada's economy sputters. I I think I saw the better one in the chat, but I'm gonna go with my first instinct, which was regulation. Like that seems like it would be a naughty uh, word. You shouldn't say regulation, uh, but. The yeah, but, but they probably have a lot of regulation in Canada. Well, yeah, I mean, not in my Canada. <laughs> okay. My this Canada's is, all man crazy. This isn't your dad's Canada. We have regulations <laughs> up here now. <laughs> Justin, playing politics with the R word as Canada's economy sputters. I would say it would have to be recession. Recession. In recession. All right. I say regulate away all the recessions. I, I would say, or, that, or I did see a few here in the chat. Uh, Raple syrup, I think. <laughs> Raple syrup. I, I like a Red Dead Recession. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. We got an answer here. The answer that we were looking for was recession. Yeah. What we're facing now is the prospect of a made in Canada recession. There we go. That's a point to Justin. Congratulations, Justin. Good job, yeah. sir. Congratulations. How, how are you feeling, Justin? You feel you feeling like you got this one in the bag? Far from our word. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brian, we're going to start with you on this one. Ready. This is from theroanoker.com. The H word. Uh, uh, H word now. That, uh, that's it. That is the headline. I I got a little more for you here. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
headline the H word. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to our to the nineteenth post in our dog training blog series. The H word. Oh, uh, um, welcome to the 19th post in our dog training blog series. This is the row. Oh man. Uh, I'm going to go with Humpty dance. (laughs) I believe when it comes to dog training, the first thing you got to do is you say you, if you have multiple dogs, first thing you say is gather around. (laughs) I'm the new fool in town. (laughs) And these rules are laid down by the underground. Now I'll eat up all the treats that you got on your shelf. Now just sit. Sit, <laughs> good boy, and watch yourself. My name's the H word. <laughs> <laughs> Your dog and food's just fine. That's a great guess. <laughs> all right, Justin, Brian's. Set. I'm really strict looking. That's all right, because I get the treats cooking. <laughs> you wag, you brag, you constantly try to zigzag me, but you can't. Uh, 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 but 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 in my heart, you frag me. My tail, you won't make my tail wag wag me. Hmm. Yeah, and that is true because in a 69, an H word nose will tickle your rear. <laughs> Actually, uh, it is while well, at 69, you'll be licking your own rear. Yeah, because dogs do that. That's never mind. There we go. Uh, Justin, the H word. I'm going to go with house training. Ooh, house- oh, that's good. Ooh. House training. Oh, house breaking? House breaking. House breaking. Yeah, uh, house breaking, too. Not like two words. Yeah. Is that one word? House boogaloo. All right. Uh, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Dave. Well, I, yeah, I think I got it. I really I got, I got this one. It's the uh, well known animal training technique of hypnosis. <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, man. These dogs are going. The dogs are right, getting right. pumped. That's good. That's right. You <laughs> get the dogs pumped. Dog, right? Yeah, no, you just look your fucking beagle right in the nose and just go like, and three, two, one, sleep, sleep, sleep. You're in a deep that's, sleep. You're in a deep sleep. That's what Blooper was doing with. That's what he's trying to put him in hypnosis, grab the top of there. Yeah. Now the dog that I'm petting now, and only the dog that I'm petting now in a moment, in a moment, I'm going to say three, two, one. And when I say three, two, one, just the dog I'm petting now, you're going to piss on the rug, tear up the couch, destroy the world. Bark, 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 bark. All right. The answer we were looking for for the H word was. Please be hypnosis. Humpy. Humpy. Oh, humpy. Oh, I was oh, the closest. Does science say I was the closest? Uh, yes, I'm playing the Humpty Dance. In the yeah. Background. yeah. Congratulations. Oh, that's amazing. I did not expect that. That was such a twist. I have not photoshopped the screen of a, a news blog with two dogs humping on it. So everyone knows. Although the dog getting humped looks thrilled. They both look like they're having a good time. I'm they afraid both, to show it again. Having, yeah, no, that's like that's like a, like on a brochure. If dogs had a brochure for the park, I mean, also, like that would be on the front cover. Oh no, that dog is definitely staring down the barrel saying, except Connie Chung. <laughs> <laughs> like, look, at, look at it. That dog is, is, is mugging. Yeah, leaving nothing to the imagination. Dog. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Gonna get a little tougher here, Justin. We're starting with you. Go ahead. Oh. Adam Pope <clears throat> on Leeds United. Quote, they don't mention the P word. Ooh. Adam Pope That's on good. Leeds United. Quote, they don't mention the P word. So Leeds United is a uh, a, 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 a football. footy squad, as yeah. they call Locker, it. Out there. Right? Yeah. Uh, so... I would guess it's a term within that framework. So I would say uh, penalties or penalty kicks. Penalties. Okay. Penalty, penalty kicks. Popes. Popes. <laughs> we <laughs> we <laughs> are not. I mean, look, yeah, we don't mention the Pope around here. <laughs> Keep them <laughs> back in your fucking eye type, uh, you know, whatever. Dave. Uh, See, that was my answer, but I don't know if you guys are aware, but uh, just like the cla- Catholic Church, the soccer you know, around the world has a real problem, so obviously it's pedophile. That's oh, the word that geez. I mean. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, it is it is the P word nobody's talking about. Work around here. <laughs> nope. Uh-uh. 
Notepad <laughs> files. Uh, Brian? <laughs> I'm going to say um, pr- propriety. <laughs> they, don't, uh, they don't mention it. <laughs> no DRM on our soccer balls. <laughs> Open standards. <laughs> 3D print the goal. <laughs> Uh, all right. <laughs> Adam Pope on Leeds United. They don't mention the P where the P where we were looking for was. Plan. Oh. They don't talk about the plan. P word at all, but they clearly have a plan at some point if this great season continues. Ooh. Oh, wow. That's weird. Plan. Huh. Uh, I'm going to have to plug this one in the, into the science computer because propriety, <laughs> penalties, and <Yeah>. pedophiles just... <laughs> uh, I can't... My human brain... By the way, that is my least favorite Fleetwood Mac album. (laughs) (laughs) Not good. I'm going to feed this into the machine here. The funny part to me is he's always doing something. I can never see what his hands are doing, but he's like always doing something during this. <laughs> you gotta wait for the right amount of dings. Ding 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 ding. Yeah. Ding. All right. <laughs> Science has told us that the winner of this one run is uh, Brian Brushwood. Oh, uh, Thank you so much, um, Science. Can't uh, argue with science. <laughs> Some, somebody in the oh. chat says, so science is just jazz scatting. <laughs> Let's go to the science machine. A zip a dop bop boo I like the accusation that science was on Tumblr. I don't agree with that one. <laughs> okay. Uh, so where are we at now? Uh, Brian has three points. Justin has three points. Dave has two points. we got a few more here. Close game. Let's Close. do it. This is from thehindu.com. And Dave, we're going to start with you. The headline is Trump and the K-word. Mm-hmm. Oh, I got it. I got it. Wait, is oh. it hindu.com? Thehindu.com. Uh, uh, Hindu, not not its rival, hindu.com. It's, it's <laughs> of course. Well, what, uh, actually, I, I do see in, in the Google News feed uh, the Hindustan Times a lot as well as the Hindu. Uh, real thing. Okay. 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 Uh, karma. Karma, okay, karma. Dave says karma. Mm. Trump and the K-word. Karma. Yeah, police, arrest this man. <laughs> Brian. <laughs> exactly. Uh, how many K-words are there? Three. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> so I'm going to go with <laughs> <laughs> that K-word. <laughs> You're going to go with the... Uh, the K word. I, now, <laughs> just again, these are not actually <laughs> the words. I didn't sneak any. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. All right. No, no, no. Here we go. The K word. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, Justin, Trump <laughs> and the K word. Who boy. Uh, Trump and the K word. Trump and the K word. And what do we have so far? Uh, we've got karma and the K word. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, Brian, just thinks it's another the K word. No, no, no. I think it's it's clan, K L A N. Ah, oh, I see. Uh, okay. mm. Slash clan. Mm. The worst IRC command. Justin <laughs> slash clan. <laughs> Trump and the K word. Uh, I'm I'm just gonna blatantly steal here from the chat uh, and just say Dan 33's kneeling, <laughs> kneeling. That was a big controversy. Was uh, oh. Colin Kaepernick's kneeling? Oh, Although no. I'm also gonna loop in Kaepernick. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, Good Kaepernick guess. also is a kid. Kneeling Kaepernick. All right. Here we go. All right. The answer we were looking for for the K word was. Kashmir. What? The Kashmir region. Wow. Yeah. Uh, not the Led Zeppelin song. <laughs> no. no I mean, certainly <laughs> names. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but of course, the, the the disputed region between Pakistan and India, mm-hmm. Kashmir. God, that'd be great if he had a mm-hmm. hot take about the Led Zeppelin song. It's just like I mean, no, but seriously, those driving riffs. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. No. Terrible. Awful. Overstated. <laughs> Worst song ever. 
The New uh, Chicago. That was awful in the Diddy remake for the Godzilla movie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Beep, 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 beep. Oh, science got a quick one for us here. Thank you so much, science. Uh, with his answer <laughs> of karma, Dave gets his third point. Ooh. There we go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that's gonna bring us to three to three to three. It's our last round where the round is worth well three points. Whoa! Uh -oh. Holy shit! Someone's gonna get blown out. That's right. I'm just gonna leave that one where it lies. Uh, we... Kneeling. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, there's some good ones here. Here we go. <clears throat> Uh, this is a headline that we've got here from uh, from the Wall Street Journal, WallStreetJournal.com. Google okay. used the S word. Let's pretend to be offended. I from WallStreetJournal.com. Google used the S word. Let's pretend to be defensive, to be offended. Excuse Ooh. me. Uh, we're going to start with Brian on this one. Google used the S word. Let's pretend to be I guess SEO, because uh, but but that's that's oh, oh, oh that's I'll, a good one. Yeah, I'll say SEO. Right, Justin's gonna say or Brian's gonna say search engine optimization. <clears throat> SEO. Justin, Google used the S word. Let's pretend to be offended. Shit. <laughs> it said shit. Google went out and said shit, and then they they wrote shit in the New York Times. All or right. Was it the no. Was it the Journal or the Times? Uh, it's it the Journal. The journal. Mm. No, they might say the S word. Yeah. No, they said shit. They said shit, 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 shit tits. Shit old, shit old, <laughs> shit, 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 shit. That's oh, what they said. Hey, Bryce, you hear the Google <laughs> said shit? <laughs> shit or said, said shit on it. Shit it. Shit, shit it in. Shit. shit it out. Take a shit out on the floor. <laughs> shit, shit. There we go. Dave. They uh, said Chip, Ice, I'm just saying. All right. <laughs> Google used the S word. Let's pretend to be offended. David. Oh, wait. They, just, they, they, they said snitch. Despite the fact that uh, 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 Mr. <laughs> Mr. Schmidt, uh, which they always say on first reference, uh, uh, referred to snitches and then did not immediately correct himself to admit that they get stitches. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, I'm gonna say slut. Oh, what? damn! Okay. Man, <laughs> said... These sluts on Google, man. These... <laughs> That's right. Slutting and shitting and shitting and slutting. That's how they go about it, man. Slutting. That's a. God That's... damn it. That's, uh, That's how you have to do it for the SEO, which stands for slut shit <laughs> in optimization. <laughs> The S is the second S is silent. It's the, S the is second CEO. S. Well, I mean, expect, when you meet these sluts, they better be. <laughs> Are you the Lutz? All right. <sighs> the word that we were looking for, Google, use the S word. Let's pretend to be offended. The S word was supremacy. <laughs> what? Uh, Google. Supremacy. Google used the term quantum supremacy to deter to describe its quantum computer's prowess. We actually talked about this on Weird Things a little while ago. Not this. <laughs> yeah, about the controversy of it. We talked about the S word. Did we? Did we use the S word on <laughs> Weird Things? Oh. All right, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to put this one. Your, your, your answer <laughs> is it slut? Slut? Shit? shit. Well, shit old McShit or Shitterton. Yeah. Dot dot dot. <laughs> uh, or SEO. I'm gonna have to plug this into my uh, science machine. Shit. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, Michael Winslow, everyone. <laughs> okay, and there we go. I got an answer here from Science. Thank you so much, Science. This episode brought to you by Intel. Uh, with his answer of Slut David is our winner. Huzzah! Six points. Hey, oh. there we go. Congratulations, David. Thank you, David. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not just murder that's made easy with this guy. He's beating us at our own goddamn game. Uh, 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 David, yeah. one more time, get out there exactly how people can uh, <laughs> get, your, get your movie Murder Made Easy. 
Uh, yes, uh, you can get Murder Made Easy on uh, at Amazon Instant Video, iTunes, Google Play, uh, Microsoft Store, Tubi TV for free. Uh, and you can get a Blu-ray and DVD on Amazon.com or ScreenTeamReleasing.com. So, yeah, if you like Murder Mysteries, check it out. Bit.ly slash Murder Made Easy. Uh, this just in. At the end, it turns out that David wins the game. Yeah. Uh, uh, David, I think that your your your, your connection's getting a little uh, 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 soft here, so we might have to to let you go. But, but all the best on the movie. Uh, it looks fantastic, and I hope everybody uh, hope everybody goes and gets it immediately. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you ah, he's drowning. He's drowning. Goodbye. Uh, no. <laughs> oh, man. What a slut. Uh, <laughs> I, I thought it was a real shitty shit shit. shit. <laughs> hey, Brian, you want to do a little diamond time? Goddamn right. Diamond time is a portion of the program that we dedicate to you guys and your projects. If you head on over to diamondclub.reddit.com, you'll see a big old fat sticky post right at the top of that. Just click on that and tell us all about what you're up to. Top three posts will get read right here on the show. Mike TV. I'm oh, sorry. It is uh, uh, Ocho Tona Princeps who has the number one post. Mike TV's book uh, Kickstarter has one week left. The project's funded, but there are still many copies. This is your chance to get a personalized and numbered copy of the songbook for Get Set Go's fifth album, Fury of Your Lonely Heart, featuring the lyrics, chords, and stories behind the song straight from Mike TV in a very high-quality hardcover. You want it? Here's how you get it. YOLO420.com slash GSG book number three. We also got from Meryl Barr. Hey, Diamond Club, as listeners of Cord Killers know, I have a podcast called Word Tetris. <clears throat> it's the Internet's number one masterclass in the art of Hollywood rewriting. I wonder Featuring who that. many of your favorite television. You know what I like about that description is I instantly get what the podcast is. <laughs> uh, featuring many of your favorite television writers, such as Sean Ryan, that's The Shield, Amy Berg, Matt Nix, Christopher Titus, uh, Michael Jacobs, Aaron Korsh, and even everyone's favorite, Justin Robert Young. Sadly, the series has now come to an end, which means for the first time the show's full archive including patreon exclusive episodes are available for a single purchase of 50 bucks on wordtetris.com slash archive but because i love you guys so much i'm making the lot available for 25 percent off for anyone who uses promo code ck at checkout for the rest of the week that's ck is in cord killers so go to wordtetris.com slash archive purchase the collection so i could put some much put some much needed extra money in my pocket and you can learn some great things about the art of screenwriting from those in the know uh and let me say uh from the episode that i did which was all about raise the dead uh uh merrill is just a fantastic interviewer he is he is he is great uh and i will definitely be buying this archive yeah well and, and keep in mind like that that's some top quality uh people who know what they're talking about that he was able to get on there oh yeah <laughs> uh uh here we go tv travis rounds us out my friend put together a comic anthology of video game related stories called get in the game you can get the uh, Get in the Game uh, book on Kickstarter. Just look for Get in the Game, a comic anthology, right now on Kickstarter. Yeah, it looks like you're wanna... off to a really strong start, too. Yeah, look at that. If you want to have your project shouted out right here on the show, just head on over to reddit.com slash r slash diamond club or diamondclub.reddit.com. Sticky post at the top of the page will get you your ticket to this Diamond Time segment. Uh, is this part where we... Well, yep. Uh, uh, do the movie draft minute? Yeah, it's time for the movie draft minute. Everybody was still sick. So here's your bootleg movie draft minute. In sixth place, it's Brian Brush with $338.7 million. Uh, in fifth place, it's Jenny Josephson with $403.4 million. With $427 million. In fourth place, it's Brett Roundsville. In third place, Movie League Mike has $534.4 million. In second place, it's John Teasdale with $591.5 million. And in first place, with $609.8 million, it's Tom Merritt. That's the bootleg movie draft. Uh, Wait, how many, how many more weeks do we have? Uh, we have th two or three weeks. It ends uh, Valentine's Day. Yeah, it's pretty much over at this point, though, right? It is, Pretty but much. my God, did it come closer than I thought it was going to come. Oh, yeah, uh, and, and to uh, me, the big... two chugging on uh, really was, like, the only thing that brought any kind of drama to the top of the draft here, and and John Stahl's just a just a fart out of uh, out of out of the, the, the winning 
the winter circle there. And to be honest, it's it's Playmobil uh, shit in the bed at barely one million one million dollars made. Well, and Frozen too for not not turning not around the many extra years. Yeah, to twenty million dollars. Yeah, yeah, I guess that was possible. I mean, literally, I think uh, uh, Sunmoon pointed out that if Tom wins, it's literally because of cats. <laughs> so Brian was in the roundabout way right because <laughs> uh, uh, cats did uh, make the difference there, but uh, uh, you know, not. Although I guess it would technically be be Black Christmas. Black Christmas was was the ten million that put him over the top. Yeah, right for the wrong reasons. Also, first time ever in the chat realm league, it looks like it's going to be a 24-way tie for the win. Everyone had Joker and Frozen 2. Wow. Uh, which I assume are the top two picks per uh, uh, per dollar on the draft. That's insane. Yeah, that's crazy. First time ever. Yeah. Uh, hey, man, uh, shall we go to do a little bit of mailbag checkage? That, that's a roundabout way to say let's look in the mailbag. Yeah. Let's, let's look at the mailbag. Yeah. Let's look in the middle. Join us for drinks in the Diamond Club. In the Diamond Club? Mm, that sounds grand. Super grand. This is the part of the show where we read your emails that you sent into mail at nightattack.tv. If you, have, if you have a game, also, you can send it in M-A-I-L at nightattack.tv. It's an email address, kids. Look it up. Uh, we've got a email here from uh, BioCow. BioCow writes, You have access to YouTube.magic. You can search your significant other's past using keywords and or dates. Things like drunk Halloween throw up or one night stand or girls slash boys night out two weeks ago and see video of what really happened. Would you use YouTube.magic or leave it alone? The I married men begin to sweat. Yeah, I, I very, very much would not use it if for no other reason than to preserve my ability to say, well, I would never search you why did you search me <laughs> oh uh, every inch of that website would i explore <laughs> really <laughs> i oh god yeah no i mean that's look part of the reason why i got into journalism initially is because i was just a, a fucking know-it-all i just need to know <laughs> i need to know everything if there is a resource for which is trustworthy and I, that i could do that and i could i could do it about everyone i know let alone uh, the person that I'm married to, 150%. Of course I would do it. Wow. See, I probably would have leaned more towards Brian's side, right? I tend, I I, am, I give someone their privacy, right? I'm not going to go read. Because that's where you get in trouble is if you go and search for something and you find like a, me a weird, like a, a text message or something, then you have to answer for why you were breaking that trust in the first place. Right. Or and if you hadn't found anything, you know you would have been well, in the and, wrong and way. And also, back. like, even if you, let's say, misinterpreted something and it was innocuous, then and, and you make the decision to not look farther, then you have sown weird seeds of doubt that don't need to be there. And uh, what, what See, you got? You, you guys are conflating two, to me, separate activities. Oh, so you the think the scenario is different? Looking it up. Well, number one, there's the general world building questions that I would have on like whether or not this is inherently a secret thing or is does this it come with a, YouTube premium you know, or not? Yeah, does it have with ads? Do I have to watch another fucking <laughs> I'm coming to you again for financial support, Bernie Sanders <laughs> ad? Like, you know, if, if it's imagine that it is just YouTube, right? So this is all publicly available and we can all lie about whether or not we go on it, but oh. Well, I thought it just, was specifically it, a magic thing only that let you see your significant other. Uh, it's a searching your significant other's past. So I guess we could say it's semi-private in that way. I mean, I guess, yeah, that's why it's like we could we could fill out this world if we wanted. But the larger point that I was trying to make is that you are conflating two different ideas. The idea of seeking knowledge is different from the idea of acting on knowledge or having knowledge affect your world. Now, for some, they might automatically trigger like the second you know something you can't unknow it it's going to affect your actions but you know i kind of feel like, like that was the thing about being a reporter is you have to understand that the world is big complicated and ugly and and that has always kind of affected how i've dealt with talking to people that might have done things that that i would find repugnant yet i have to do a job and and i think that that would probably i mean that has like i found out a lot of things about people that i've dated that you know would maybe be not the best or unsavory but 
you have to make a decision on whether or not what is there is worth having that affected. And, you know, if you found out that your significant other murdered somebody or murdered their their ex-partner, then you'd be like, okay, this has to affect what's happening now. If you find out that, you know, maybe but they slept with a few more people than they told you about, then does that, does your knowledge of their lie affect your relationship? But and my, my argument would be no. Uh, so, so, but here's the difference is the only way you find out if somebody murdered somebody is by watching everything and scrubbing through everything and finding out everything you don't want to know, everything that's less than a murder or whatever. I guess you would type in a oh, yeah. murder. Uh, oh, I guess. I well, mean, oh, you can search by it, subject. Yeah. Do they have meta tags? <laughs> yes. <laughs> of activities. Yeah. A lot of a lot of unsafe for not made for kids content turns out on YouTube.magic. Man, even if even wow, if Bonnie had crazy. murdered someone, like the, my first thought would be like, God damn it! Now I have to cover up this murder. And I actually, and I actually do think that because I, I compare this to like looking into someone's phone without them knowing or without their knowledge. Right. But uh, but I actually think that that distinction makes me more towards Justin's side where you can be there. The, it becomes a gradient of what you would search for. Right. Like search for murder. That, that seems that seems very reasonable. Maybe. OK, but why are you sus something. suspecting your significant other of murder? If you are in a place where Some you are good liars, where you got to make sure just to be safe, then then I would say you're not in a healthy place. If, if you feel the need to search. Did you do any murders? <laughs> then you're probably I'm not like, in a great I'm, relationship. <laughs> number one, number one, I, I don't think that there's any shame in just doing a few cursory boundary searches. And you hope that obviously there's no results. But if, but if there are, you know, like I, I would, I would want to know. Now, let me say this. If Ashley, my wife, told me I'm aware of magic.youtube, and I would prefer that you never go on there and look up stuff about me. I would not do it. So this is this is the difference of what Bryce is saying is that going into somebody's phone is inherently a violation of privacy. Mm -hmm. In this bizarre scenario that we are setting up, where there is a resource that I can look it up that is public, that is semi publicly available, right? Uh, then that is different to me ethically than mm -hmm. than going there. And I would respect somebody's decision uh, uh if they ask me not to serve here's how i know that you are a liar is because Ooh. there already is public records searches that will reveal uh, uh arrests uh and so on and i am going to wager that you have not run a search on your significant other <laughs> <Whoa>! <laughs> Right, moving Ooh. right along. All right, thank you. Okay, right, right. We also got an. I mean, this used to be my job. My job was literally to run with anybody that that I would that like the first thing that you would do, anybody you cover anybody in news is you run whatever cursory kind of public record searches that you have. Yeah, and also I guess uh, I'm I'm in a place where I don't know. Uh, the 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 getting to know you phase of our relationship is so far in the past that there never would have been an opportunity. Uh, so I don't know. It would just be snooping and and like like I mm -hmm. I might I might want it so that I could see uh, you know and share you know you know like oh look here you are at your eighth birthday you were such a gear cute as a button cuddled up together but that's not the purpose of the question the purpose of the question is do you I mean, go looking but, around but, but, but also act like i mean and you and bonnie were together before this was a ubiquitous thing but now digital scoping out people's instagram scoping out people's facebook pages looking back at all these pictures and videos that are publicly posted like there is a soft version of this that exists right now that isn't a public record search. You are looking back and seeing them with old flames. You are looking back and seeing them in their party days. Like, don't act like we don't do this now. Uh, granted, you were in a situation where everything was locked down before a lot of this was ubiquitous. But I mean, hell, even when I was single, which was now a very long time ago, I I Facebook stalked everybody that I even that I would meet at a bar and and become facebook friends with i would crawl every inch of that publicly available data but i think that's i think looking up someone's facebook 
feels I think this YouTube dot magic feels more like running a police or background check than looking at someone's yeah because Facebook because page. because it's everything on Facebook is inherently curated. Like, I want the world to see this about me. Yeah. But this the whole question is the parts that I don't want the world to see are I, available. All right, so so you know everything you've ever posted to Facebook. Uh, would you bet that there might be something on your Facebook page, uh, something that you've uploaded at some point on the internet for which you would be embarrassed by? Like, I well, think that. But, but at least there's a presumption that, that if you posted it, you wanted the world to see it. Uh, whereas, I, yeah, I, I, I would feel like I could defend most things that I had posted at the time, even if I'm embarrassed by them. I don't think I've posted. Uh, I don't know. Don't give me that look. I don't know. All I'm saying, all I'm, all I'm saying is that to me, mm -hmm. that is far closer to what we are talking about than, let's say, I, I think that it, it is uh, uh, equidistant to looking up a public police record. That like going, doing a deep search through Facebook or Instagram uh, uh, is is closer than you guys are giving it credit for to this scenario huh. where where a lot of these things are just available but yeah i mean i want the knowledge and then i will i will trust myself and my relationship to how it would be handled wow uh why don't you send in your feedback on this question mail at nightattack.tv we've got one more uh email here this is from john subject how i discovered dc uh john had seen leo laporte back in the day on tech tv and then found twit uh, they subbed to NSFW and watched the boys eat a fish stick sandwich burrito. Yeah. And John has been a fan since. What a what an episode to to first kind of get in on. That's pretty great. <laughs> That's how fantastic. Much, how much you found it uh, on Twitter the other day too that they had just watched the fish stick sandwich burrito episode and put it up and posted about it on Twitter and then uh, tagged Robert Benfer and Robert Benfer liked it. So uh, oh, I was great. happy to. To be graced by the presence of uh, the great Robert Robert Benford. Oh, that's, uh, that's great. Um, yeah. Man, uh, dude, I, I, th I think it's about time to wrap things up. Send your emails to mail at nightattack.tv. What did we learn today, Justin? Uh, well, Brian, uh, we learned that uh, Murder Made Easy is available on all digital platforms. Yeah, we learned that, uh, that you never go full rotten. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we learned that uh, uh, life is like a hairstyle. <laughs> we learned that occasionally sh shouting out the answer, the Humpty Dance, is the exact right thing to do. <laughs> we learned shit, slut, slut, shit. <laughs> Most importantly, we learned that we love you guys and we'll see you next Tuesday. Die in a fire, unless you're Connie Chung. <laughs> you forgot to stare right into the camera. <laughs> The bit boss. Do we know the bit boss? Congratulations to Wan Yam. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah, thank you very much, Wan Yam. You're the best. Everyone else could die in a fire. Every time you go, I get so sad that I wanna drink a warm glass of Drano. Night attack. 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 I love you. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>